All right, so now most countries have removed their requirements to have a COVID test before you enter. Unfortunately, the place I'm off to today um, hasn't removed that requirement yet. So first things first today, I've got to go and get my nose poked. A few moments later. All right then, nose poked. Let's go on an adventure. Today I am super excited because I'm about to take a flight on an airline I've been wanting to fly for absolutely ages. Um, today I'm going to be flying to Mongolia with Mayat, Mongolian Airlines. Uh, super, super looking forward to this, been um, trying to get this flight for absolutely ages. Today is finally the day we take this special flight across through Mongolia with Mayat. First things first though, I had to check in. A job easier said than done. All right, so it's a slight confusion already, but it's like one line and one or two desks um, for my check-in um, here in Frankfurt. And this is the sort of the one line with everybody in it, but then there's also some passengers going to a different desk up there that isn't marked up at all. So I'm not quite sure um, if business class have their own line or if it's just wait with everybody else. I'm not entirely sure. I might go and hop in that line in a minute and ask. Now I'd allowed four hours between flights, but as that time ticked by and I hadn't moved an inch, I got more and more concerned that even four hours wouldn't be enough here. Okay, this is the most confusing check-in experience in a long time. There's three lines formed now, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. I just want to check in. Everyone's just sort of crowding the gates, crowding the area, the desks. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, check in, please. Pardon me. Uh, checking in, please. To Mongolia. Uh, to Seoul. Yeah. Maya. Maya Ulan Bas. Do you have any? So I have. Uh, yeah, so I've got COVID tests, and I have um, e visa for South Korea as well. So you you got visa, right? I'm sorry. You you got the visa? For yes, for South Korea. Yeah. yeah. And That's this one. From Mongolia, just transit in Mongolia. I think I have to run now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Oh God, what a nightmare that was. 45 minutes to check in for my at the 10 people that were in front of me. 45 minutes, crazy. And now I've literally got 40 minutes till the plane leaves. So I've got to leg it because they're calling boarding already. Let's go. Now in my experience, Frankfurt isn't the easiest airport to negotiate at the best of times, but with it having taken well over an hour for my bags to arrive after my inbound flight, then the time it takes to get across the airport, it left things incredibly tight for my connection. Um, can I? 13.45 is now, can I? Yeah, schönen guten Tag. Do you have German passport? UK. UK. Uh, come with you. Yeah. Was that guy with you? Or? <laughs> yeah, through this one, thank you. Alright, that's passport control done. Time for security, they're boarding now. Oh, this is not a relaxing experience. Right, made it to the gate with 10 minutes to go until departure. Um, apparently the boarding gate is now closed just as I came through it, but there's nobody actually letting anybody on the plane yet, so we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, guys, that is a four hour self-connect here at Frankfurt Airport. So um, yeah, including collecting your bag and everything and coming through passport control and all the rest of it is taking me sort of three hours and 50 minutes. So yeah, maybe leave another hour um, if you do a self-connect here at Frankfurt, or better still, just avoid Frankfurt altogether, really. It's just an absolute horrendous nightmare to connect at, but um, never mind because I'm about to get on board the beautiful 
34 Mayat Mongolian 767, which is just just behind there, but I can't see it because there's a big building in the way, but um, we'll see it in a minute, and very soon we'll be on board heading to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. All right, time to get on board, Mongolian 76. Thank you. Next time. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. All right, so welcome on board the Mayat 767 heading to Mongolia. There's my view. I swapped with a um, passenger um, so he could sit with his um, wife a few rows back. So I'm in 1A, the seat of kings, um, for today's ride over to Mongolia. And it's quite nice. It's in a 212 config. You've got two seats here, one in the middle and two on the other side. Um, similar to a few other 76s I've been on. Actually, Uzbekistan was in a similar config to this too. Um, but it's a very nice plane. This is one of the newest 767s that have ever been built. It's only like 11 years old or so, 10 years old, um, something like that. So I'll pop the actual details on the screen so you can see that but yeah it's um, proper nice isn't it really nice loads of leg room here what we've got down here we've got power down here so we can plug things in we've got some um, in-flight entertainment system controls for the seat we will be trying those out later but yeah <sighs> aside from the nightmare that is Frankfurt Airport I'm looking forward to getting on this on my way today um, absolutely incredible plane today um, and yeah so excited after yet more musical chairs, as the crew moved people around, it was time to push back and get on our way to Mongolia. So still row one on the other side. They should have seen every seat on the Mayap 767 by the time we actually get to Ulaanbaatar, but um, yeah, never mind. Pretty much the same as 1A, really, just on the other side. today then took us east out of Germany to cross Poland, Lithuania and Latvia before entering Russia. We flew to the north of Moscow, Nizhny Novgorod and Yekaterinburg before heading across to Novosibirsk and then crossing into Mongolia. Flight time today was 8 hours and 12 minutes, cruising at 33, 35 and 37,000 feet. Alright, so airborne from Frankfurt on leg one today. It's about a nine hour stretch now across to Ulaanbaatar, the capital city of Mongolia. And then like, I've got about a three hour connection there onto my next flight. So far, so good. Um, the crew have been really nice. The plane's really comfortable. Beautiful modern 767. You don't see many of those these days. Um, and the cabin, it's um, all right. It's kind of in this obviously 212 config, um, not flatbed or anything, but. That said, even though it's an overnight flight, I don't think I'm going to be getting a lot of sleep today because um, where we land, it's sort of, we land really early in the morning and they're like eight hours ahead. So effectively, when we land, it'll still be sort of 10 p.m. my time. So, but never mind. Although we are a little bit late, so we'll see how that turns out. But yeah, so far, so good. Fantastic, no expense spared. Earbuds, the entertainment system, which we'll go through in a little while, by the way. Always do that. We'll do that later on in the flight. Yes, uh, shall enjoy it with my little 
home parking's earbuds. Alright then, shall we play a little game of what's in the amenity kit? Oh, by the way, everybody moans at me for holding my microphone up to my mouth like this on a flight. Um, I say, oh, you should just clip it to your shirt. Um, I'm going to show you why that doesn't work, by the way, because when I'm talking um, on a plane, if I put it here, then you can hear me. So that's why I put it up here. Um, anyway, I mean, it's a good time. Let's have a look what we got. So we've got a nice pair of slippers. Hairbrush. What is that? Oh, it's a toothbrush and toothpaste. Okay, fair enough. We got mouthwash, carrot, whatever that is. Oh, lip balm, lip balm, that's what that is. Moisturising cream. For such a fancy amenity kit, there doesn't seem to be um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot inside it, but it's okay. It's all right. It's quite nice. Like a nice pouch for something to sit in anyway. I'm blazing with the um, Myat logo on it there. One thing that is interesting with Maya, by the way, when you book a flight with them, um, you go through the whole process of adding all your extras on, like your seat reservations and any special assistance and meal requests and things like that. Um, but with Maya, you also get the option to um, take a carpet with you on the flight. Um, this is the first airline that has ever asked me if I would like to take a carpet on the flight with me. Um, and, um, and they charge you for that as well. You can take a carpet, but you've got to pay for it. Um, not entirely, not entirely sure why. Um, <laughs> I was, I was very confused, um, and I almost debated actually um, going down um, SCS and bringing a roll end on board or a little carpet soap or something like that. Um, but then when I saw the price of it, like I was like, no, I'm not taking my carpet today. Um, so yeah, if you want to uh, take a carpet on a plane, then take my app because then you can bring your carpet on board with you, so you never have to leave it alone, leave it at home. So time for a bit of a drink service. Um, I shouldn't actually be drinking right now because I'm trying to be a little bit more healthy at the moment. But when they come around offering me Mongolian beer, then um, I can't exactly turn them down, can I? And this is called... What's that? Is that Borgio? Borgio. Borgio Mongolian beer. Let's have, a, let's have a bit of a taste to see what it's like. Quite nice actually. Quite nice, it tastes very fresh. Could be that I've not had a beer in a week and that could be the reason it tastes very fresh, but it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. Look at that tablecloth as well, look. Oh, it's smart, isn't it? Um, now there you go, Mongolian beer on Mongolian Airlines. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. <laughs> All right, time for the Lou review, the Mongolian Airlines Lou review on the 767. And um, yes, a very nice Lou it is as well. Pretty clean. No fluid on the floor. That's always nice. Some facial tissues, some paper towels. That's very nice. Some Protex. A few tissues and stuff lying around. So, um, yeah necessarily brilliant. We got here no smoking sign. Just a generic 767 Lou. Very good indeed. So far, really enjoying the experience on Mongolian Airlines actually. The crew honestly have been really good so far. Um, and the plane is just so nice as well. It's not um, at all what I sort of um, expected. I don't know really what I expected from Mongolian Airlines. Um, I didn't necessarily expect a nearly brand new 767 and the most amazing crew and service I've had in a long while. It's been really nice so far, I have to say. Um, looking forward to 
getting down to Ulaanbaatar and seeing what it's like there at um, Mongolia's International Airport. That's going to be pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, before we then connect on to our next leg. Um, but now I'm going to head back to my seat, try and get a bit of rest um, before our arrival down into Mongolia. That was the Noel Phillips Lou Review. Dinner service turned up. I've gone for the beef today. Um, so we've got beef, green willies, I'm um, sorry, I mean asparagus, um, and um, some veggies and some potato, a couple of prawns, just a fresh seafood from the um, deserts of Mongolia, um, and yeah, a few condiments and stuff. Let's have a go, see what this is like. Just look at that though, isn't that cool? Start with the prawns, I think. The fresh Mongolian seafood. It's quite nice, actually. Let's try the beef now. Very nice. Very nice beef. A little bit chewy, but it's quite nice. It's rather interesting here. You're right overhead Russia at the minute. Um, European Airlines, of course, banned from flying into Russia right now, or at the time of making this video at least. Um, Mongolian Airlines, not. Although there was a period of time that they were sort of sending this flight kind of on a really roundabout route over Turkey um, and Kazakhstan across to Mongolia that way, which adds kind of about two hours to the flight time, so it is a shorter route this way, but we are actually overhead Russia, which is interesting. There's not many flights from Europe coming over Russia right now, um, so to actually be able to see Russia out of a plane window is um, a little bit different. not been to Russia in ages. It's been well over a year, I think, since I was last there on my... Um, last trip, I um, don't think I'm going to be able to go back anytime soon, really. So, um, this is as close as we get, I think. This is so weird. We're literally right overhead Moscow right now. That's the city of Moscow down there. <laughs> Never thought we'd be seeing that in 2022. have a look what's on TV. Let's have a look at the in-flight entertainment on this plane. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So movies, let's have a look what we've got here. We've got new releases. Let's see what they are. Yeah, a few in there. Angry Birds. Not too bad. Let's see what dramas we get on Mongolian Airlines. Let's have a look. Peppa Pig. There's a drama. Don't know if this is the episode where Peppa Pig gets turned into bacon. Daddy Pig has to rescue her, I don't know. And ends up eating a slice for himself. <laughs> no idea. Uh, let's read a little bit about us. Let's see what we've got. Company open. That's always fun. Ooh. This guy looks very serious, doesn't he? There we have it, the in-flight entertainment system. Oh, the moving map, actually, we've not done the moving map. Let's have a quick look at the moving map. What have we got? Ah. Flight data unavailable. 
got a lot of information on there, but never mind. There you go, there's the in-flight entertainment. If you want to watch Peppa Pig getting sliced into slices of gammon, you're probably in the right place. Um, because there's not really much else on there. So, um, yeah, I'll just sit and enjoy my view out the window instead. flatbed down. Um, there is actually a flatbed. I didn't think there was. Um, and there is. It's an angled flatbed. It's not an actual complete flatbed, but it's quite nice. It's still the same. Um, and even though I'm on an angle, it's not too bad. Might try and get a little bit of rest now, I think. Um, but halfway through the flight, my flight times on this flight are just ridiculous for jet lag and everything. As we sort of land into Ulaanbaatar at like half five, six o'clock in the morning, their time. But my time, that's like half eleven o'clock at night, so I um, literally will be arriving at the point when it's time for me to go to bed, so um, I've got another flight after that as well, obviously, on the next leg, so um, we'll see. I'll try and get a bit of rest on this one and then catch up on a little bit more when we get on the next flight down to Seoul, but for now I'm going to have a bit of a rest and I'll see you in a bit. Good morning, we are now about two hours out from Ulaanbaatar, we've just passed the city of Novosibirsk uh, on the right hand side in, um, in Siberia in Russia um, and they've just started to put some lights on because I think we're about to get some breakfast service which is weird because on my time zone it's still sort of nine o'clock in the evening um, but it's now Mongolia time about 4am and we'll be landing in about an hour and a half, two hours or so um, into Lampatar. I um, managed to get a little bit of rest, I actually dozed off for a little bit as well actually which was um, quite nice, quite pleasant, a bit of a surprise, I didn't realise I was quite that tired but um, never mind. Um, I'm going to get some food hopefully, maybe a coffee and we can start our day um, in the skies of kind of almost Mongolia. All right, so breakfast has turned up. It's very healthy, actually. Looking forward to this. So we got a nice salmon. It was a choice of salmon or chicken. I went for the salmon. Get a bit of protein this time of the morning. Uh, a bit of fruit. Um, it's like yogurt. It's like a yogurt. And a bio smoothie with apple, mango, and banana. And a glass of water as well. So, um, yeah, let's give this a go. Lovely salmon. That's nice. As the sun began to rise, we started our descent over the absolutely incredible scenery of Mongolia. Now, I don't know what I expected, but landing here was pretty much like landing on the surface of the moon. There wasn't a sign of human civilization for miles in any direction. to see what the connections process was like here in Ulaanbaatar. Now as it turns out it was a slightly different process to normal. Our passports were taken off as when we landed and we were told that we'd get them back before we boarded our next flight. Now without a passport or boarding card we were escorted to the departure lounge which was let's just say a little bit quiet.
Right, so welcome to Mongolia, Genghis Khan um, International Airport here in Ulaanbaatar. That landing was just stunning. It's like landing on the surface of the moon. Literally just nothing but unspoiled landscape all the way in. It's such an incredible, incredible place. I wish it was staying a bit longer. I'd love to actually come and visit Mongolia properly and travel around. Um, but sadly not this time, so I'm just connecting through. Um, I've got about three hours here now at um, Genghis Khan Airport. They've took my passport, my boarding pass, and they said they'll give me back when it's time to go. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't think I'm going to get any lounge or anything like that here because <laughs> I don't have my boarding pass, but um, never mind. Um, I'll see here. It's quite a nice airport though, isn't it? Very nice, very modern. Um, certainly beats any expectations I might have had of what um, Ulaanbaatar International Airport might have been like. It's um, beautiful, brand new terminal building, really nice, modern, spacious inside, very good indeed. So yeah, thumbs up Mongolia um, for having a fantastic airline so far and a fantastic airport too. After an hour of waiting, my passport and boarding card were returned back to me, but it wasn't long after that before a familiar situation started to unfold. A few moments later... I've just heard my name called out over the tannoy. I hate it when that happens. I just can't figure out what's going on. <laughs> Hello, you just called my name? Uh, no, uh, you sure. transit? Yeah, transit, oh, okay. yeah, to Seoul, uh, yes. Yeah. Check and back, please, check back. Check yes, back. Uh -huh. yeah, back, check through, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. After learning my lesson previously about not putting power banks in my luggage, um, yeah, duh, um, I was very certain there was nothing electronic in my bag and very confused as I was led into the naughty corner of the airport. Hey, come with you, yeah. okay. uh, Yes, my bag's checked through already. Yeah, uh, maybe no, no power bank. There's no power bank, but yeah. <laughs> Entering a room that looked like the sort of place where you got the latex glove treatments, I was sent left with some other passengers for quite some time. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> in, out, in, out. <laughs> You need to see my bag or? Mm. Am I good? Yeah. Mm, that's, yeah. This is, that's fine. Oh, it says fine. Okay. Thank you to this week's video sponsor, Surfshark, who always come to the rescue whenever I want to watch some British TV when I'm traveling. Surfshark is a VPN provider and what that means quite simply is that you can use their software to connect to the internet from anywhere in the world and make it look like you're just at home, which has some really good benefits. For instance, I could be sitting here by a sunny pool in Vietnam and um, watching some Top Gear on my phone. It lets me watch EastEnders here in the middle of the Australian outback. Oh yeah, I'll have a Castle Main 4X please mate. Cheers. Surfshark even lets me catch up with only fools and horses while well, I'm here in New York. Now Surfshark are offering you a massive 83% discount plus three months free when you use my promo code Noel Phillips at the link on the screen now. What are you waiting for? Even Baby Shark approves. Alright, so no idea what all that was about. <sighs> taken deep into the bowels of the airport and um, some inspection rooms. I'm thinking, oh gosh, here we go again. But um, I knew I haven't got anything in my bag. Absolutely nothing electronic in my bag at all. So I don't know what was going on, but um, they kind of looked at it and went, oh yeah, it's all right. And then let me go. So <laughs> I've no idea. Never mind. Um, how long until the fly now? Let's have a look. <sighs> About another hour and a half until we fly to Seoul in South Korea. Getting tired now. 
it's sort of 7 a.m. which means it's midnight in the UK um, and hopefully on the next one I might get a bit of kip. I don't know, it's only three hours built so we'll see. <laughs> All right, time to get out of here. 737 800 this time down to Seoul, about a three hour ride I think and um, yeah, I just need to sleep now. <laughs> Good morning, happy. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Hello. All right, then, welcome aboard the Mayat 737-800. A bit smaller than the 767, but still quite nice. Lovely, massive leather, comfy chairs. Um, for the flight over to um, Seoul today, uh, about a three hour ride I think, so this is more than adequate. Um, another really nice plane from uh, Mongolian Airlines, really really nice aircraft, very pleasant um, staff as well, everybody I've met has been absolutely incredible, so um, yeah, let's some um, get settled in, um, what we got here in around the seats, it's like audio controls and things, maybe a table to pop out, that's about it really, I'm not sure if there's power, I don't know, is there power down there? You tell me. I can't see it. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. It's all a mystery, but anyway. What's not a mystery is that um, I'm wiped out and I'm going to try and get some rest. <laughs> so let's um, get airborne out of um, Chinggis Khan Airport here in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, and get on our way to Seoul. Today then took me southeast from Ulaanbaatar to Seoul, flying across Mongolia and China and the Yellow Sea before starting our descent into Seoul's Incheon International Airport. Flight time today, 2 hours 46 minutes, cruising at 35,000 feet. Alright then, airborne from Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, heading down to Seoul. Interestingly, actually, as we were taxiing out there, um, one of the cabin crew came around and was checking a few people's... Um, Covid tests, obviously the one I had done in Birmingham before we uh, set off and um, she seemed a bit confused because she was like, oh it's only an antigen, you need a PCR. I was like, no you don't, you need an antigen within 24 hours of your first flight departing on the ticket, which of course is the other issue because um, my um, antigen test was before I left uh, Frankfurt, within the 24 hours before my ticket started effectively and I had left Frankfurt. Um, and she was like, oh, I don't know, um, but it'll be all right. She said, just sit down, it'll be fine. So, who knows? <laughs> but um, they did check it all. They checked all my tests and everything at um, Frankfurt before I got on the plane and they were happy with it all. So, um, who knows? Um, obviously, they wanted to check them all again on this flight and um, they've done that. And Well, we'll see what happens when we get to Seoul. <laughs> Never mind. Let's try and get a bit of rest. I don't know if we're going to get a meal service on this flight. Maybe we will. I'm imagining we might. Um, but yeah, looking forward to getting there now. All right, time for the meal service, and um, I've gone for the fish with mashed potato. Uh, it's kind of like um, well breakfast service, lunch service, brunch service mainly, so um, yeah, I'd quite call it a lunch service. Um, it was quite nice. A glass of water on the side, so let's have a um, taste of this fish. Throwing it everywhere, flipping it. Right, let's have a go. Quite 
nice indeed. After a couple of hours flying over China, we started our descent towards Seoul's Incheon International Airport. today then cost me 1600 US dollars or around about 1400 pounds working out at a cost of 30 cents or 24 pence per mile. Uh, I don't have the Q code, so do, uh, I, do I need to fill yeah, in one of these? The okay, yeah, thank you. straightforward wasn't it straight in um, they just took my covid test from when i came in and um, straight through immigration and out much easier than last time i came here when they were shipping people off to quarantine centers and stuff it seems to be a lot easier now to get into korea so um, through passport control all very good very friendly and now waiting for me back I've just got to find my hotel now, apparently. Um, I don't need to take a taxi, according to the taxi drivers, it's very honest. Most places in the world I go, they'd be um, about to rip me off for about 20 quid to take me around to the hotel, but they're all saying, oh no, you can walk it, it's not too far. So let's um, <laughs> try and figure out where it is I need to go <laughs> to get to my um, hotel here in Seoul. It's blooming warm here again though, it's just like leaving home again. made it finally to my hotel at Seoul in Cheon Airport and there is um, yeah there's my view it's not a bad view over the terminal and the runway is just over there as well pretty decent it's quite a nice room this isn't it um, this is the Grand Hyatt um, at Incheon Airport um, so yeah well um, you know what one thing I absolutely love when I fly on an airline is an airline that I really don't expect to be that great and then I get on them and I find out that they're absolutely brilliant. And that's totally the case with Myat, Mongolian Airlines. I really, really enjoyed my flights with them. Proper high quality airline. I honestly, I don't know what I was expecting, um, but um, I wasn't expecting them to be quite as good as they were. And that airport as well um, in Ulaanbaatar, Chinggis Khan Airport, the new airport there. It's only been open about a year, by the way, um, I found out. But absolutely lovely place. Really, really nice place to connect on flights and stuff. Um, so yeah, fantastic experience with my app Mongolian Airlines got into ride that 767 as well which was pretty flipping cool as well um, all the way over here to Seoul in South Korea and this is just where my adventure begins on this trip because I'm going everywhere um, on this trip over the next couple of weeks while I'm traveling all around Asia um, and may even pop down to um, a little country called Australia in the process as well but um, you'll find out in a future video but if you want to know all the flights that's coming up and all the trips that I'm going to be doing on this then become a Patreon because on my Patreon you get access to all of my flights and everything um, you get all my history of my flights you get all my flight schedule as well um, it's all on there um, exclusively for Patreons as well as access to my WhatsApp group and um, 
we do a Thirsty Thursday once a month as well, so you can um, pop on and um, um, join me and um, have a bit of a drinky poo with me on a Thursday night once a month. Um, so yeah, just um, check out my Patreon, the link's on the screen now. Um, and yeah, let me know what you thought to my at down in the comments below. I oh, that, that bed is looking very comfortable, isn't it? And that shower there is looking also very comfortable after that journey so um yeah um i'm gonna go and get some rest and ready for my next flight which is ooh, in about 24 hours time um from now but um, in the meantime thank you so much for watching take care and i'll see you on the next one bye for now